welcome to my channel. I'm Julie and this is Julie Saws Her Own Clothes. So today I will be sharing my bumper haul from the Stitch Fest, which I went to yesterday, which was the Thursday. Uh, and I'm really tired today because it was a long day carrying <laughs> heavy loads of fabric around with me, um, but it was so worth it. Uh, so I'm going to share with you what I brought home from my big day out at the Stitch Festival. So I'm, I've got a load of notes in front of me, so I will keep looking down to make sure I don't forget anything. So I've put them in order of purchase and the first purchase that I made was I bought um, a metre of each of these two liberty fabrics and they are the london collection and the first one let me just check that's not upside down no it isn't and this is just lots of very intricate scenes from landmarks in london it's a beautiful um soft tanner lawn and i want to make a couple of bucket hats with this but I want them to be reversible. So the other fabric that I purchased was also from the London collection. And here it is. So I can wear it inside out and it look very different. So they are the two Liberty fabrics that I purchased from Sawbox. That was, uh, I think I was, I'd been there about five minutes before I purchased them. Um, and then on it went. So the next store that I purchased from was Roy's Material World. And I started to look over, there was a, a lot of bolts of fabric that were just beautiful colors. And he was telling me that they were Liberty fabrics that he brought back from Italy and I, I just fell in love with this one. They're just soft watercolour type flowers. And this was £12 a metre um, in these beautiful floral colours. Floral colours. Floral isn't a colour. Floral isn't a colour. Can you tell I'm a little bit tired this morning? but they are really beautiful um, and I think it's gonna make a really lovely blouse. It's so soft, that fabric is so soft. And actually the purchases that I bought today, there are lots that go with each other so they can kind of, you'll see what I mean as I go through, um, as I go through the rest of them. But that was the only, fabric that I purchased from Roy's Material World. Um, I guess it felt busy round about lunchtime and it was very, very hot in there all day. Um, so it felt, uh, it felt hot, you know, carrying stuff around and some stores got very busy. So I don't know what it's going to be like on the Friday and Saturday, because I know those days are much more popular than the Thursday. So I'm really glad that I did go on the Thursday. I think that was really good for me. I'm, I don't do that well in big crowds. Um, so it was just right for me, really. I then went and found the Lady McElroy stand and I purchased... Um, two point this was a remnant and it was 2.2 .2 meters of the nightlife tokyo i'm just gonna check i have this the right way up i think i have yes i have i think most of you would have seen this fabric it's not brand new but it's something that i've kind of looked at a few times and thought that's really lovely this was marked down at 12 pound a meter there's 2.2 meters and he gave me that for 22 pound. Lovely fabric, so soft. 
Um, it's a cotton Marley lawn and I want to make a button down shirt with that. And I've earmarked what I'm which one I'm going to make. Um, I then purchased an olive green uh, rummy linen. I think that's what it, rummy linen. And this was from Saw Me Something. She had some beautiful fabrics on her store. But this I think would make, I went really looking for fabric to make some nice smart trousers with. I'm not sure it's capturing the real oliveness of the colour, but it's like, it has like a very, within the weave, it's, it's like a yellowish colour undertone to it, but it's definitely olive green and it's a really lovely, soft linen fabric. That was £9.50 a metre and I've got a couple of metres of that and I think that'll make a really nice pair of trousers, smart trousers. So that was my saw me something purchase. Um, I think my favourite stall was probably one of the smallest stalls there actually, tucked away in the corner upstairs and that was simply vintage and I just loved having a rummage through her stall. She had some beautiful laces. I couldn't get near actually because there was quite a, a lot of people looking at the laces who were not interested in moving on. Um, but I did find some really gorgeous fabric. Now I had been looking for a lime green fabric to make a button down shirt with. And I'm going to make the fibre mood. I think I might have showed it in my last video i want to make the fiber mood shirt from the current special edition magazine and this is the adina shirt and i want to make it in the deep cuff it's got a really lovely collar to it i think there's a line drawing is there a line drawing that must be on the next page um yeah on this page you can see how deep that cuff is i really love that collar and cuff combination. So I'm gonna, I wanted to find something in lime green to go with something that I made this week, which I won't show you until the end of March because I am making the wide leg trousers from peppermint patterns for the so frugal challenge. So I will be posting them at the end of the month but I wanted something to go with them. And rather than, that's all I'm gonna say actually, cause I'm gonna to give too much away if I carry on nattering on about it. So I don't know if I will get this in a um, form of a shirt by the end of the month, but it's to go with the trousers that I'm making. Now this, um, from Simply Vintage is a lime green cotton moss crepe. And it is just stunning. It was tucked away, I almost missed it. Almost missed it. Again, this has got very yellowy undertone, um, like some of the fibers are yellow and then crossed with green, but it's a lovely crepe fabric beautiful color can you see, oh you can see there the yellowy undertone to it but it's very lime green and i have this had a gold star on and the fabrics with the gold star were half price so i paid let's have a look for this one the lime green that was 10 pounds for 2.1 meters and it feels beautiful i think it's going to make a really beautiful button down shirt i've got a thing about the button down shirts there's a few of them at the moment that really caught my eye that i think yes i'm going to make them i've got a lot of dresses that i made last year but didn't make any uh trousers other than the pull-up um wide leg trousers the saguero 
pants. I mean, I had a few of them, but I want some fly front, smart trousers with some nice blouses. Um, and I think that you'll see at the end of the month what I'm talking about in terms of them going really well with the trousers that I've made. So yes, I spotted that and was like, yes, that's definitely, I see quite a few lime, plain lime coloured fabrics, but they weren't the right material that I wanted. That was just perfect for me. So I did nab that. I also spotted um, this gabardine wool. Again, I think this is gonna make a really lovely smart pair of trousers. And this gabardine wool, is the i think the label said the color was called custard now that might put some people off but not me i love it and i purchased um this was in a two meter bundle for 15 pound and it is just it's a little bit of fluff on there it's just a beautiful let's see if i can catch the color of this it's not there you go there you go. It's a really lovely fabric. And it's it feels like a very light linen, um, but it's not a linen. It's um, a gabardine wool. Can't wait to make a pair of trousers with this. And I'm definitely, I, I think I'll make the new tilly in the buttons um, trousers with this and I think I really want to do the welt pockets on this I think they'll look really smart um so yeah I'm really looking forward to getting around to making those and the last purchase I made from Simply Vintage is this and it is a biscuity coloured flecked linen now I spotted this on a roll. Can you see that? How lovely is that? It's a really lovely, it is a biscuity colour. It's coming out slightly darker than what it actually is. It's more this shade here. It's hard really when you haven't got good lighting um, and you've got artificial lighting on. But it is a, it is a beautiful colour. Um, and actually, when I took the roll up, there was a lot of people at the stand and she had a very small space. So I gave the roll, I gave the other, these were all neatly packaged up in ribbons with the prices on. And this one was on the roll. And I think, I can't remember what it said on the roll, but I asked if I, ha if I could have um, like two and a half metres. And she said, I offer you whatever's left on the roll for £15, so I took it, £15. Now, I measured it this morning and I've got four and a half metres of this linen. It's just, I think it's stunning. And actually what I'm gonna make with that, I think I've got enough for either um, a long maxi skirt or a, an, a another pair of smart trousers but what I really 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 want to make with it and one of the things that I went with intention of purchasing for is this the the Delma I really want to make the Delma what do you think that in this beautiful linen I think that's going to look rather lovely there you go there's the line drawing there on the bottom can you see it's got uh, it's a cape with a button down under the arm um, kind of waist area but it's got a lovely storm flap on the back and on the front and a kind of hidden button placket on the front I just think it's gorgeous and I think it's gonna look really lovely in this fabric so that I got very excited about when I realised I've got enough not just to make the cape with, but actually I could definitely, that's huge, that's, yeah, five metres of it. I'm going to put it on the floor because it's too 
big to refold at the moment. Um, yes, so I get two nice garments uh, from that. That was an absolute bargain for £15. Absolute bargain. The last piece of fabric that I purchased was from Lily Fabrics and it is a plain orange cotton. I got two metres and it was six pound a metre. It's quite a stiff cotton. So I think it'll actually make a really nice pair of trousers. But when I start putting these fabrics together, I just think these will go so lovely together. So I'll have a shirt and a pair of trousers. I mean, I do love bright colours in the summer and bright coloured trousers. I think that those two will go really lovely together. So I also purchased from Ethel and John some buttons so pulling things together i think these buttons on this i don't know if you can i'll just pull one off i'll pull one off and show you against the fabric how lovely it's disappeared it looks there's just such a good mix for those purples but the orange really pops out with the trousers. So I think those buttons will make a really nice button down shirt from the Nightlife Tokyo and the orange plain cotton. They, I think, will look stunning together. So I've got two packs of those because I think if I do make that fibre mood shirt with that fabric i think there's two or three buttons on the cuff as well as down the front so i've got two packets of those and i also hmm, i also got two packets of these buttons which i think are just so pretty and they will go with this as well if i wanted to use these colors instead so they almost disappear into the color of the shirt as well uh, of the fabric as well now there are some really good i don't know if you can see that because my there's some really nice matches of colors in that there you go can you see that it's almost like clear with these gorgeous speckles of colour running through them. So I think they will look really lovely with that fabric. But actually, I think they will also go really well with this as well. So they'll kind of just blend in really nicely and almost disappear and not kind of stand out and clash with i can't really show you that well because my eh, can you see yeah the colors are really lovely match so i have 12 of those as well um so yes in terms of the ethel and john ethel and john beautiful little stand gorgeous gorgeous buttons and bul um, belt buckles I loved having a, a rummage through her stall. Uh, so yes, I did get myself a nice little stack of buttons. I also purchased some labels. Now these are the Sarah Hart labels. And where did I buy the Sarah Hart labels? I think it was Sister Mintaka. Again, another stall that I just couldn't get near. The fabrics, there were so many... There were so many people around the fabrics, it was just too difficult. And I just, yeah, I don't know. People just don't want to move away or hug the spears. And I'm, I'm not one for hustling and fighting to get amongst it. So I kind of missed out on the system and tacker fabrics. But I did 
um, pick up some of the sewing labels that were at the front of the counter. And we have these which say, thanks, I made it. We also have these which um, made for you in like a gold lettering. It's quite nice. And these which uh, Kirsty, who spent the day with me at the Stitch Fest, was like, they remind me of my Vans. They are kind of Vans type labels. So they're quite cute. I also um, paid a visit to Barn Yarns and I picked up a few haberdashery items. So I got some threads that I need. I stocked up on sewing machine needles i've got my stretch needles microtex universals i think i've got three of each three three lots of microtex and three lots of universals so i've got plenty needles for my stash and i also got some um glue refills for my glue pen I find this really handy if I'm um, if I'm using invisible zips. I like to kind of glue them down in place. This washes off. It's not um, it doesn't make a mess, and it's clear when it dries. So it's really it's really useful actually for the labels as well, making sure that the labels are secured before I stitch over them because they are quite easy to manoeuvre to like to move under the needle and then they don't look nice so I usually use the glue pen for that. In terms of the event itself it was really lovely. Um, Kirsty and I uh, had a VIP ticket so the VIP lounge made the deer really because it was busy the little food stands, there's not many, were rammed all day, people queuing for food and coffee. The VIP lounge was quite calm, which was really nice. It also had a cloak room where you could leave your coat and your bags. And that was really handy because I wasn't carrying, you know, the fabrics that I bought in the morning were then in the clock room so I could um, walk around and not be carrying carrying the fabric around all day long with me so that was really lovely and it was really lovely to see people you've been purchasing fabrics from for a long time to actually see them face to face that was really nice I really enjoyed watching the catwalk um, and it was lovely to see um, other people there. It was really nice to meet people who have connected with on uh, on YouTube or on Instagram and to actually meet face to face was really nice. Um, I'm going to put a couple of pictures um, of some of the people that I met because I think I was really, it was so lovely to meet the two Amelias. <coughs> Excuse me. My throat's going, I did talk a lot yesterday. My throat is going, <coughs> but I did meet um, Amelia Ellen Soares and So Amelia. Uh, I think it's just wonderful that those two ladies are from the same country they're both sewists, they both got the same name and they've kind of met and become good friends through YouTube and Instagram. So it was lovely to see those two ladies together. I've been following their um, channels for quite some time now. And um, yeah, it was really nice. It was really nice to just say hello and have a little chat with them, see what they were purchasing. And I did meet... Um, Liz, Liz, you were lovely. I mean, we just giggled at each other. I don't know what that was about, but we just we both got a little bit embarrassed and just giggled at each other for a bit. But Liz is on Instagram as Sofa now, and she was just so lovely. 
I was just really delighted to meet you. So I'm glad you did come over and say hello. I'm not sure how I feel that you and your husband both recognised me by my voice before you even saw me. That's a bit strange. Um, I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. That was quite amusing. Um, but yeah, it was really lovely to meet you and chat with you and to see what you'd purchased as well. Uh, and I know that you had a, a lovely day. I also did bump into Sue Lansdowne very briefly. It was very busy on that corridor. Um, and Sue did see it in the chat from my last video that she was coming along on the Thursday and she, she would say hello and she did. Uh, it was lovely to see you, Sue and Susie. And there were um, another couple of ladies. And I'm sorry, I didn't remember everybody's name. I did try and write them in my notes on my phone, but I think at times in the day I felt really busy and bustly in terms of trying to keep out the way of trolleys and buggies and yeah, so it was just a fun day. It was a fun day, met some lovely people, met some lovely store holders. Um, I had a great time. I had a really great time. I've got a lovely fabric haul and I've got some really strong plans on what I'm going to make with those. Uh, so I don't think they're going to sit in my stash. I think this batch of fabrics, along with two other things that I've already got in the sewing room that I really want to make up, uh, are kind of firmly on the get made plans. For those of you who noticed my last, I can't believe I did this, but my last video I was talking about what I'd been making and I didn't even realise that behind me, Annie the Manny was wearing the uh, DVF wrap dress that I'd started. Now it's not fully finished. I think if you just look there, you can see the hemline isn't, it isn't finished, but I could have talked you through where I'd got with that. That I, I have had a couple of fit issues and now I'm not sure what's going on here. I think Annie's either cheated me because the dress looks like it fits really nice on Annie. I don't know if you can see the wrap dress really well there. It looks like a decent fit on Annie. When I put it on, it looks completely different. So there's a few fit issues um, that I need to sort out because I can't even put it on to show you. I'd be flashing too much of the boobage at you, which it wouldn't be nice for anyone. Um, so I, I need to do a little bit more work with the with the wrap dress, but I hope to be able to share with you very soon um, how how that's ended up because it's not quite finished yet. So, but yeah, I forgot to even mention it, and then realised as I was editing, like she was stood behind me the whole time. Um, and yeah, I forgot to mention that I've done quite a bit of work on the wrap dress, but it's not complete yet. So I will pursue that and see if there's any way I can get it to fit me better. And if not, I will share with you why I haven't been able to do that. So yes, I think that will be for another day though, because I've been yabbering on for over half an hour. I'll try and edit this down a little bit because actually it's Friday. I'd love to get this out as a Friday sores. I always miss Friday sores. I never quite manage to get myself together to do a vlog for a Friday. So yeah, I'm gonna attempt it today. Um, but yes, I've had a lovely week. I've really enjoyed it. I made a really nice pair of uh, wide leg trousers and I will share them with you at the end of the month, which is not too far away not too far away at all, um, for the Frugalissima. Now, Frugalissima, so frugal. It's ran by Sam from Frugalissima and Ruan, the Yorkshire saw girl. Now, I've not been part of the vlog tour for So Frugal 24, literally because I, w I really wanted to um, support Jess, uh, so what if I saw with uh, Saw Yellow for Endor, and I didn't want to overcommit myself because I've got a lot on. Um, I've got a lot on, really. So there's, I didn't want to 
agree to do something and then and then not find the time to do it. So I didn't even think I'd find the time to make a garment for so frugal but i have so i'm looking forward to sharing that with you uh at the end of the month so and i'm sure you all know about um so frugal 24 and if not just hashtag it or have a look on frugalissima or on the yorkshire so girls uh youtube pages and they will have a list of all of the vloggers who've been to, i think there have been two or three every day um, vlogging their ideas on free patterns etc so I'm not going to go into detail on that because it's already out there but yeah I'm quite delighted that I can get involved in the challenge um, at the end of the month because I did find the time oh, stop rab rabbiting on and I'm gonna go now I'm actually really really tired um, I am I'm really tired so I will catch up with you next time. I'll say bye for now and thank you so much if you're still watching after all that jabbering on and I will see you next time. Take care. to get back to Tower Hill and now I'm waiting for my husband and we're going to have a little drink before we get the train back to Essex. 